Good morning, happy Friday on this rainy March 17th, 2023. I wanna ask you, do you know what you have? I was in my truck and I noticed all these buttons and I'm like, I don't even know what this does. And I press them like, oh, and then this, oh. And I read up on this and it's like, oh. And I, I started thinking about the people that we have in our lives. Do we realize how many resources we have within the people in our family, our, our friend community, our, our community period? Do you really know what you have? Do you, even in your house, do you know what that switch does? That button does? I'm just saying like, sometimes we can have an easier life or more fruitful life if we just use what we already got. God said he blessed the work of your hands. It's like, do you even know what you have in your hands? I mean, even on the professional side, I had a job where I had to make some cuts that I never made before. And I was like, okay, well, I know I have the tool that'll do it. It's just, and I know how to make the tool, make the cut. I just never did it before. And I'm up here looking for like, where can I buy this already made? And it's like, nope you got to make this and I'm like Arr. I said okay God you're stretching me he's like just replicate the old piece and you'll be okay so in replicating I learned the angle the the cut the thing with and I mean I had help that was a God sin and it just amazed me at how much we already have already right there ready for us and I mean I look at some of the people in my family who are very resourceful I have an auntie who's probably the most plugged person I know I mean it don't matter what you want to need she knows somebody especially getting a job <laughs> And I just be like, wow. It, it's just amazing that when you, when you really take a look at, and even, even, you know, in ministry, do you, are you able to let go of your hand on some things because you have the support system that you needed and is there so that you can let go, let God and things still move forward so just wondering do you do you know what you got do you know what it can do do you know how to use it do you know how to prosper from what you have I think of I know it's in second Kings but it's the woman with the woman with the vessel of oil and she was like, oh Lord, I'm poor and I don't, you know, um, my, these debt, debtors gonna take my children and and uh, the prophet Elijah came to him and was like, hey, uh, guess what? You got, um, you got a vessel of oil he said, all right, go borrow all the vessels that you can. So she had a community of friends. You know, he's like, hey, go, go go look at your supporters. See what they got that they can let you use. And he poured oil until all the vessels were filled. And he said, now pay off your debt and live off the rest. And I'm like, wow. To live debt free. To live debt free in this space or time where it costs anywhere from 
$250 to $750 just for an application to rent a place. And to be in a world where people don't even realize that they have elite mindsets based on people who don't have money like that. And it's just like, you know, like at this point, how can you toot your nose at, at somebody who's renting? Even though in my mind, it, it feels like it's cheaper to own property now. But I just, um, I realized that no matter what you choose, it's expensive to live. If you own a house, you got to pay the taxes on the Avalorum taxes. You own a car, you got to pay insurance. Uh, insurance on the house too. And some people don't have a companion to help them with this. And I was talking to a friend the other day, yesterday, and she said, it's hard to live by yourself and not have a team. And I was like, yeah. And she lives with her sister or whatever. And I just, you know, I just thought about a lot of people who live with somebody else, whether they rent out a space in somebody's basement, a room, and even some people, all they can afford to do is live in a hotel. And it's just like, oh my God, it's crazy that it's so expensive to live. And I, I look at expectation of some people on different situations and it's just like, how do I live by myself and for those who are it's just the grace of god even if you have a a, a job that that pays well for you to live by it's just the grace of god that you because the way the the money flow is going right now sustainable economies are 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 not as frequent as they were in the 80s you have more ro automation and robotics performing tasks that humans used to do, that people used to do. And what are we really profiting when we have all these resourceful people who can do work? And one thing I do know is that our education system is failing because our marriages are failing and our families are failing. Because if you can't train up a child with discipline to recognize, hey, wrong is wrong. No, that is wrong. Running, just running out in the street, throwing stuff out the, out the door, just whatever. You, you, certain stuff you just can't do. No. And to have parents scared to discipline their child because somebody just not going to agree with it. I don't like how you, like, really? It, what? Now, I don't believe in abuse. I don't believe in berating a child, verbally abusing a child. I mean, I don't believe fussing at a child is, is abusive when they done did something wrong repeatedly. Sometimes you got to let them know, like, hey, you wrong. You know, and I don't believe in cussing out you old dumb, blah, 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 you know, going off, you know, name calling and that kind of stuff. But I do be blaming that what you did right there was wrong. That's not what you're supposed to do. That's not that's not who you are as a such and such, you know. Going back to what do you what resources do you have outside of? What resources do you have outside of being disobedient, being unfocused? You can focus. You can obey. And if we don't teach our children how to be safe, how to understand what danger is, 
to expose them to things that help cultivate their mind to show them that we can change and they can change and at the right age share with them our struggles and so that it can encourage them to at least have enough courage to press forward and to do the right thing so at some point we have to recognize what we have as parents brothers sisters sons and daughters to help our community to be better we're starting with ourselves first and then by example helping other people and through us being kind good examples of life not just existence not just the struggle not just the strife not just preaching the oh woe is me but like yeah, we go through struggles, but God still blesses us with good times and, and things better. And that attracts people to the kingdom of God, to you to be able to minister to them that even if you don't convert them or even try and convert them, just to show them a better way to live and let God do the rest. Just plant the seed in people's life so that whatever comes next in their life, they, at least they know they had something good. They came from you to help them see through to the next situation and do better than maybe they did with you or somebody else. What do you have that you're not using? What can you apply and use to make life better for you, the next generation? Think about it. Like, for real, think about it. Who, what, how do you want to be? And even look at the people that you have around you. What are they attracting? I, I have two friends that if they call me or if I sow any seed, type of seed in their life, it ain't got to be financial, just bless them with, hey, have a good day. That it brings good energy my way or a, a better day or what have you recognize the signs of what you have with the people and what energy they bring into your life so what do you have and i know i'm all over the place but i want to be all over the place on purpose what values do you have what belief system do you have and are you applying it because the first thing a person don't want to hear i don't want to hear your religion i don't want to hear your scriptures and guidelines and laws and all that stuff say that for the people who are religious who are trying to hear your doctrine but for the person that you meet on the street that needs something to eat Guess what? I need something to eat. Then I can hear you. I need some money to help pay this bill. Then I can hear you. I need to see your kindness. I, I need my physical needs met before I can, for my emotional and mental needs can even be addressed. Maybe I just need a hug right now to satisfy this emotional emergency that I got right now to help me bring it all in. To help me hold it together. And that's what hugs do. Help people hold it together. So. What are you sowing in people's lives? What is coming out of you when you squeezed? What buttons are pressed that make something happen or react in you? What are you really true to? What is, where is your loyalty, dedication? Think about it. What do you have? And now that you're thinking about what do you have, what have you thrown away and what are you ignoring? And what are you throwing away? Some things ain't meant to be kept. I just did a major overhaul at my house. I was like, whoo, the energy is just like, whew, 
It's amazing the new air you get when you get rid of stuff that just been sitting, not used, not useful. When you get rid of that energy, it's a different life. And I can't tell you no more than what I am. Just saying, like, get rid of the junk. Because stagnant energy is stagnant. It attracts stagnant. It's like the static electricity shock. Because it, it's not flowing. The current is not flowing, so it shocks you. Know what you got. Know what you got so you can get something better. I'm done. Know what you have. May God bless the work of your hands. Prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So that you know what you have. So that your hands can be blessed. The work of your hands can be blessed. What's in you? What's in you? What's in your mind? This is your survival tool. This is your tool for reception of information. These are your application tools. Make it happen. Make it happen. You got it. God got your back. Be of good courage. The opposite of fear is courage. Because you got to have faith to be courageous enough to follow through on what God promised you. He promised you. For I know the thoughts of you. I formed you in the womb. To prosper you. And I'll leave some scriptures in the um, description to follow up. Because that was two I'm mixing together. But anyway, I'll leave the scripture references in the bio, in the description. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye.